Have you ever gone to a website and clicked on view page source, or maybe you've done something even more heinous, the most heinous of crimes, and clicked on inspect element? Well, if that's the case, then this Missouri governor thinks that you are a hacker. Now, I don't usually talk about politics on this channel, but when there is a boomer this out of touch with technology, I have to talk about it because this story honestly is hilarious. So about a week or so ago, a local Missouri newspaper known as the St. Louis Post-Dispatch had a journalist doing basically what a journalist is supposed to do. Actually doing journalism, trying to find out what is, you know, happening in the world. And one day they were on the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website, the DESC website, which has a tool for checking teacher certifications and credentials. Now, this is a perfectly good tool. It's very useful to find out, you know, what the teachers at the school you're sending your kids to actually know and whether they are qualified to teach the things that they are saying they are teaching. Now, when you went to the page for an individual teacher, if you went and clicked on view page source or inspect element and you just scrolled down a little bit, it would show that teacher's social security number. Now, why was their social security number being stored in the HTML on the web page? I've got no idea, but it was, and the journalist saw this. But the journalist wasn't confirmed that it actually was a social security number, so they went and checked a couple of other teachers' pages just in case it was just a similar looking string, and from that, they went and checked if they actually were valid, and yeah, they were the social security numbers for those teachers. Now, in the article the Post-Dispatch put out, they estimate based on state pay records that about 100,000 social security numbers were vulnerable from this, I guess, vulnerability. So, this was going to be a pretty big story. They could have just run it straight away, tried to get the clicks from it, give it some, you know, crazy clickbait title, but they didn't do that. Instead, what they did is they took the responsible white hat approach and contacted the DESC in advance. And upon hearing this information, they basically immediately pulled the tool down because you can't just have this information, you know, sitting out there. Someone else might discover the vulnerability, someone that isn't trying to be as responsible with it. And a DSC spokeswoman said they had begun to do an audit basically to verify that no other obvious flaws exist. Because, you know, when you have something this basic, something that no sensible developer should be able to code into a tool, it's very likely to be that there might be another flaw. And the DESC also said they would discuss the situation with the Post-Dispatch by Wednesday evening, which, as of the time of them contacting them, would have been the following day. But by Wednesday afternoon, what I would like to dub Operation Scare the Boomers has begun. To be fair, it's more like the boomers who don't understand technology also scaring the boomers who also don't understand technology. But regardless, what happened is a letter was sent out to teachers by the Education Commissioner. And that letter stated, an individual took the records of at least three educators, unencrypted the source code from the webpage, that is a very key statement, and viewed the social security number SSN of those specific educators. So, this part's true. This part's true. It's framing it in a very malicious way. This part right here, unencrypted the webpage. So, let's go and unencrypt the webpage for the post-dispatch. Let's go and right-click and go, view page source. I have now committed... A felony, I guess. And then following this letter being released to teachers, the Post-Dispatch basically just said, screw it, we're going to release the article and talk about what's actually happening so that we don't get just completely thrown under the bus by the DSE trying to cover up their tracks. Now, there is one argument to be made against releasing the article. So because all of this was being stored in the HTML, there's going to be a lot of people that still have those pages cached and will actually be able to go to those pages and then still access the data. Another argument is that because of how poorly made the websites are, it's very likely that basically every web archival system has archived the pages as well, so all of those social security numbers are still probably accessible. 
But personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal because at some point, someone was going to discover the information anyway. It's just that the Post-Dispatch reported on it before anyone else did. And then following up in a press release referring to the journalist as a hacker. Now, anyone with more than, you know, three brain cells to rub together can see exactly what the DESC is doing here. They have made 100,000 social security numbers vulnerable to the public. And that's a pretty big deal. And that being found out would sort of put a lot of pressure on them and have a lot of, you know, negativity sent towards them. So instead of accepting that they made a pretty big mistake here, let's go and deflect that to someone else. Someone who we can frame as being some evil hacker. Now, this takes us all the way back to the governor I mentioned at the start, Governor Mike Parson, who upon hearing about this, or more like having someone from the DESC basically just tell him exactly what they want to be said, decided to hold a press conference. The reason why I frame it like that is, judging by what he said in the press conference, he clearly has no idea what he's talking about, and is basically just being fed lines. And this press conference, I'm not going to play it here, but I'll leave it linked in the description down below. This press conference is one of the funniest press conferences I have honestly ever heard and has some really amazing quotes. So through a multi-step process, an individual took these records. So yes, I guess pressing right click and clicking view page source is multiple steps. I wouldn't call it a process, but it certainly is multiple steps. But if it's framed like that, it makes it sound really, really scary. He also says that the records were only accessible on an individual basis. Now, while that's technically true, if you know, you do everything manually, if you actually wanted to scrape all of this data, automating that would be incredibly simple. All you would need is a Python library, a Perl library, Ruby library, whatever language you want to use that cycles through all of the teacher records and just takes the data off the page. The fact that he doesn't understand that already indicates he has no idea what he's talking about. Next up, he says it is unlawful to access encoded data and systems to access personal information. The data was encoded in Unicode, basically as plain text. There is no possible way in Missouri that looking at plain text sent to your computer is a crime. I cannot believe that is a crime. What he meant to say was accessing encrypted data, but I'm sorry to say, Grandpa, but the data wasn't encrypted. Now, because he's going to be starting a massive investigation and he wants to bring everybody involved to justice, that's actually something he said, this incident will cost Missouri up to $50 million to investigate someone accessing plain text available on a website. He's going to divert resources away from other things that are actually crimes to go after this. And lastly, he says, this data was not freely available and had to be converted and decoded to be revealed. This man unironically thinks that clicking on view page source or going to inspect element and modifying the web page is hacking the website. If you sent him like, I don't know, something in Facebook Messenger where you modified the message, he would think that you have hacked Facebook. If anyone should be at fault for this, it's not the journalist who told you your website was completely broken, it is the developer who actually wrote this code and the manager who actually signed this off. Because clearly, they don't know how to do their job. There is no possible world where you should ever store private information in plain text. This would be like having a website and then just storing the password for your account directly in the profile. If the developer does that, they should be fired because they don't know how to do their job. Throughout this video, I've been calling this a vulnerability just because that's what the articles have been saying, but it's really hard to call this a vulnerability because it's not like, you know, data was accessed due to poor account controls or there was some buffer overflow bug that allowed you to avoid logging or even social hacking where you're pretending to be someone you're not. The data was literally just sitting there. It wasn't encoded even in like 64-bit encoding or hex encoding. It was literally 
just there. Even a developer in their first month or their first week of writing code, not of just working at a job, of literally starting to develop code, should know that you never store private information in a place that random people can read it. But at the end of the day, this sort of behavior and this sort of response is what discourages people from actually doing white hat work. Vulnerabilities like this are way, way more common than you would like to think, which is more than zero. This should never be a vulnerability. But there are so many websites out there that have been discovered to have problems like this, and this data sooner or later would have been found out. And it is better to have been found out now when someone with good intentions found it, where they can tell you before they release the information that there is a problem. Now, I know some people are going to be fighting in the comment section because this is a Republican governor. I don't care about your dumb US politics. I genuinely don't care. No matter what country you're in, no matter what side of politics you're on, there is going to be people who do not understand the basics of computers, and a lot of those people happen to run your countries. So that's going to be it for me. Be sure to go and watch that press conference that's linked down below because it, it's, it's, re it's really funny. That's going to be it for me today. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe, so only bearer pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brutal Ops and Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.